I've worked with over 250 clients over the past 10 years, and this is what I learned. By the way, these are in no particular order, just in order that they came to my head. The first thing I want to talk to you about is expectations. If you want a quick win, do cheap work. If you want a solid start, do your research. Or in other words, if you want to start and get your first client and start making money fast, you likely have to work for dirt cheap or just be willing to do things that other people wouldn't, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But if you want to build a career that you love, something that will stand the test of time and that will eventually lead you to success, you want to take the time to do the research on both the skills that you want to offer, the clients you'll be working with, and all of that. Now, the next thing I'm going to tell you is crucial if you want to make an actual living as a freelancer, not just a well-paid hobby, and that is pricing. I would advise you to start by defining your dream rate, your goal rate. This is what you're aiming for. And for this, you may want to look at other freelancers in your industry, you see what they're charging and get inspired. But now you're just starting out. So you want to decide what is the lowest you would work for. What would make sense for you? What is the lowest that you would accept to do a job? This will be your starting point. Now, arguably the most important part is you want to bridge the gap between those two values, right? If you're wanting to start at five an hour and let's say you want to go to 85, which is what I charge now versus what I charge in the beginning. How you do this is you want to raise your rate with each new client. But in order to raise your rate successfully, you'll need a couple things first. Things like confidence. If you're not 100% confident in your rates and what you're charging your client, they'll be able to tell. I can guarantee you. Now, the second thing you need is social training because it's not just you who needs to have confidence in yourself. Your clients need to trust you and your work too. Now for that, you'll need reviews from past people you've worked with, anyone that can vouch for your work quality and work ethic. You also want to have a portfolio. If you don't have one, get one. You don't need a client to have a portfolio. Do a passion project. Work with a beta client. We did a video all about beta clients, so more info on that right there. Now, another thing, the most important skills of a freelancer are likely not what you think. It's not graphic design or programming or marketing. It's a bit of marketing and sales, but you're going to want to sell yourself or your services. But it's not only that, it's also organization, especially after you start working with multiple clients and juggling deadlines and project files. You definitely want to have a good organizational system in place. On a similar topic, you also want to have discipline because especially if you're working at home like I am, it can be easy to get distracted. See what I mean? But out of them all, the most important one I found so far is customer service. As a freelancer, you you do need to have somewhat of a genuine passion for helping people, for solving problems, to simply be there to help your clients in their business and find success in their business and be there to help them. I was going to say with anything, but make sure they pay you. Not going to lie, I was going to film this last bit outside, but it's raining. Going back to pricing, do not, and I mean do not lower your prices just because a client asks for it. If you want to meet them where they're at, what I typically do is instead of saying, I'll give you A, B, and C. I'll only give them A and B for the price that they can pay. So basically you're lowering the price for a reason, not just because. If they were out shopping and came to the cashier, saw they couldn't afford everything on their cart, they wouldn't just say, oh, it's okay. You'll pay me next time. They would likely have to put something back on a shelf, right? So one of the things in your service has to go back on the shelf. On the other hand, if you find everyone saying they can't afford you, you may want to take a step back and reevaluate your pricing. Maybe also your marketing. Because here's the thing, maybe your prices are in fact too high. Or maybe, just maybe, you may just not be selling the value the right way. If you find people are just saying yes, left and right, with no hesitation whatsoever, it may feel really good. Trust me, I've been there. But maybe your rates may be a little too low. It may be just too good of a deal for them to pass out on and you may want to raise them, which is also a good problem to have. Now, since we're going back in the script, let's get back to your portfolio. And for that, I'm going to go back to my office. 
Hold on, here we go, much better. Now, like I said, going back to talking about your portfolio, if you offer something super visual like graphic design, it will be easy to create a portfolio. You just show them what you've done and that's it. Now, sometimes people come to me and they don't know what to show in their portfolio because it's not visual, it's not obvious. They say like, I do programming or even writing sometimes since again it's not that visual so it's harder to catch people's attention whether you're doing your portfolio in a pdf format on your upper profile contra profile social media whatever the same rules apply and my advice is if it's not visual if you cannot show the work visually try to show either a behind the scenes a testimonial that's designed in a nice way or even some sort of interesting slash impressive stats that are related to the work you did. If you're in the programming world, you can show maybe the code you created and use in like a screen recording type video that could be considered somewhat of a behind the scenes kind of portfolio. If you want to go the testimonial route, you can design a testimonial using something like Canva. It's super easy, super simple, and you get a cool looking design. Now for the stats, I think this one's really interesting. And again, you can design whatever in Canva to showcase your stats in a visual way. But basically what I mean by interesting stats is whether you help the client increase their sales, whether you help them decrease their workload, whether you can increase their productivity, whatever it is that you can do. If you have a clear stat, show it, scream it from the rooftops. That's where you'll shine. Now, excuse the mess behind me, but I want to talk a little bit about networking. As an introvert myself, believe it or not, this does come easy to me but i know it's important so i do it anyway plus i might be an introvert but i'm a weird introvert i'm an introvert that likes to meet cool people but basically having a good solid network will not only help you you know feel as part of a community not so alone because again freelancing yeah can be lonely but it doesn't have to and if you have a network it means that you can share your successes you can share your struggles and just the day-to-day -day client dealing life. You can potentially share clients and refer clients to each other, which is super awesome. You're helping them, they're helping you. It's a win-win situation. And of course, there's a million different ways that you can build your network. You can do it on social, obviously. You can meet them in person at events, or you can join groups of like-minded people, like whether in person again or on social. I actually have a Discord server. I'll have the link down below so you can join introduce yourself and meet some cool freelancing peeps. You have also, you know, the good old Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups. Does anyone new use those? I don't know, but maybe, maybe you'll find your people there. Let's circle back to marketing. When it comes to marketing yourself and your services, you almost want to take the opposite approach to what's quote unquote obvious because you may be tempted to obviously list out the things you're good at, the services you offer and the skills you have. But instead, I want you to turn that around and focus on the client. This is also why the first thing I told you, if you remember, it's important to do that research so you can understand your client and how your service fits in their life. For example, I've been doing a lot of UGC for brands. Let's picture I'm pitching my services, but picture I'm pitching my services as a UGC creator to a brand. I could say, hi, I'm Sylvia. I can do a video for you. That's 60 seconds, fits for TikTok and whatever. And I can unbox your product, the whole shebang. Or I could say, if you're lacking content on social media or the content you're posting is just not getting people engaged and not getting enough reach, I can help you create content that's fun and authentic that will solve these problems for you. Come on, which one do you think is more attractive? So essentially what you're doing is instead of talking talking about the features of your service, you talk about the solution that you solve for the client. In the end, that's all they want. They don't give a shit how you get there. They just want you to solve the problem. Now, next up, you want to scale up. I don't care what your industry is, but I'm sure it gets updates from time to time. Whether it's new tools that come into the picture, whether it's the introduction of things like AI and seeing how that can integrate with your work, or whether it's the general industry you're working on or the industry of your clients. It's important to keep yourself up to date with some of these things so you can not only just offer the best service possible to your client, but also so you can keep your marketing up to date. In my case, keeping up to date with stuff 
stuff on social, you know, trends and platforms and updates to the platforms. It's a full-time job in and of itself. So if you decide to go into social media management, be warned. To me, that's what keeps it fun. But I know for some people, my ideal client included, just the sound of that is just overwhelming. And that's all right. What's important is that you enjoy what you're doing and enjoy the freedom of being a freelancer. Because if not, you might as well just get a real job.